my name is John Tell, and in this video, I want to give you a little bit of insight into the looks and feels of the Keyshot Doc user interface. And hopefully it will give you some indication of what it feels like being a Keyshot Doc customer and user. I'm currently logged in, giving me access to the different folders that I have accessible, some assets, and some additional items, which I will take you through here in just a bit. Let's start off with the asset preview cards that we see here on the bottom right. So with the current setup, these are ordered by the latest updates or latest uploads that have been made available to me. Each individual asset provides a little bit of a preview and some content or information about the asset. In this case, we see a title, we see a description, we see what file type extension it is and the file size. We also have this little color coded indication at the bottom, providing me insight into where this asset is in its current life cycle. Above the assets, we have the folders. So typically we replace uh, folders with metadata enhancing findability quite drastically. But for those using the DAM infrequently, we can use these bigger folders to create a visually guided experience, ensuring ease of access to all the relevant assets for every user. In the top bar, we have some menu options. This is where we'll find our favorite assets, our uploads, and we can also sort order based on their lifecycle stages. We also have collections up here. This is something we generally use for sharing assets internally and externally if we need to just send it over for someone else to visually preview, download, or if we want to invite someone for further collaboration. We have a free text search bar. And so if I search for a helmet here, I get a little bit of a preview into the results of my query. I can click view all, and this is going to update the asset repository we see on the screen. It also updates the faucet panel or the filters on the left hand side. So if we need to be more specific in our query, we can use additional metadata fields to very granularly and accurately find the assets we're looking for. Next to the free text search bar, we find the tasks bar. This is where we find tasks related to me that are connected to some sort of system workflow. This is where I see all the tasks that I need to work on within the system. And I also get insight into tasks I've sent to others. So in this case, a change request. So I can track the progress of how they're performing. Next to the taskbar, you will find an upload button, a notification section, and also the general settings. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at one of the assets right here. If I click in on the asset, I get a larger preview and I also get some action items here at the top. The menu will expand the actions items. So for any of the actions not presented in this view can be located in the expanded view. If I have, let's say a multi-page document or I needed to do a more detailed preview of an, of an image, I can click on it, which will give me a larger preview. And this would support multi-page previews and also the option to zoom in to get that extra sort of detailed preview. Next to the larger preview, we also have a more comprehensive view of all the metadata fields and the metadata values available. As the data model grows, we tend to introduce what we call metadata groups to categorize the metadata fields, making it easier for you to locate the relevant information at the right time. To make it very easy for you to find the exact metadata field you're looking for, we also have a search field. Metadata can also be enabled for one or multiple languages. You find the languages available in the menu option right here. Every asset has a related assets tab. This is, for example, where you will find the version or the history of this asset. And we will also find crops and other relationships between this assets. So for example, a GDPR or any compliance document. We also have a comments and annotation section on each asset, allowing you to add annotations to visuals and to tag users providing instructions or comments on assets. Although I'm not gonna go through all the different actions available right now, there is one in particular I want to highlight. 
This is one of the most commonly used one, and that is cropping. We can use a focal point to initiate a multi-rendition crop with a single click. And the last piece of this lightweight introduction I'm going to focus on is the analytical component. So for administrators, they will find the analytical dashboard from the settings menu. This is where we get insight into these, how the solution is used, whether it's tracking member or user actions or general asset information and data. It will all be located in here. Thank you for watching this quick and light introduction to our DAM. There's plenty of capabilities that I've not been able to show you here today. So please feel free to reach out if you're looking for a more tailored or in-depth experience of our platform.